G'day guys, uh, this is uh, just a, I guess a pitch for a tool that I think we could be using for our Traveller games. Uh, first of all, I just really wanted to stress that this is not a proposed rule change or house rule or anything like that. Really it's just a way of getting the existing rules in the Traveller book uh, into our games, but in a way that uh, I guess helps us visualise where our vehicles or grav belt characters would be on the map at any one time um, but again there's no there's no additional rules all, all of the rules especially the rules uh, between pages 66 and 68 on the in the traveler rule book uh, regarding vehicle movement and combat um, all the same this, this is just really a, a tool to help bring those onto the onto the map okay so uh, just to demonstrate this concept uh, we've got a Zodani robot here because you know who who doesn't love Zodani robots, and this hexagonal uh, token here that's going to be referred to as the vector token. Now, what that represents is where our robot is going to be next combat round if he doesn't make any maneuvers or anything like that. So, if he's just uh, patrolling around, um, then and, and he's not changing direction, not accelerating, not putting on the brakes, then next combat round he's going to be in that in that square. Okay, now, for the purpose of this demonstration, and I guess this is actually a, for the first part of my pitch, uh, I'm using squares that are actually 6 metres instead of 1.5 metres. Uh, the reason is, okay, if we're uh, um, expecting a combat to have vehicle movement and grav belts flying around and things like that, uh, you could literally fly off the map in one turn. Uh, I think the issue with Traveller and the fact that it's got 6 second combat rounds now is that uh, if you've got a vehicle that can accelerate at even a, a moderate rate, like let's just say you've got a car, um, like a normal modern day car that can uh, accelerate by two meters per second squared, which is not, that's not a sports car or anything like that, it's just a regular car. Um, something with an acceleration like that uh, could literally just leave the map in one combat round. So uh, just to bring the scale down a bit, um, so th these squares represent 6 metres instead of 1.5 metres. It's basically like four of the existing squares in, in one square across, I guess. Um, it just brings the scale down a bit. It means you can fly around with grav belts or vehicles and things like that uh, without having to worry about flying off the end of the map. And It also means that uh, something like a, an air raft could fit into one square, so it's all a bit more manageable. So. So okay, again, for the purpose of this illustration, each square represents uh, six meters. So uh, as Zodani robot's combat round has come up and he wants to move, and again, just for the purpose of this first illustration, uh, he's not going to accelerate or brake or anything. He's just going to keep on drifting. He's patrolling around. Um, each one of these squares, if you do the maths, uh, is, well, if you're um, traveling at one square per combat round, then that would mean you're traveling at four kilometers per hour. So, so this robot at the moment, um, he's traveling at two squares per combat round, which means he's traveling at about uh, or five miles per hour or eight kilometers per hour. Um, just a conversion there for the folks living in uh, primitive cultures that haven't converted to metric yet. So, so movement sort of basically has three steps. The first step is you change direction. Now, again, this robot's not changing direction. The second step is that you put down your future vector token and you put that down exactly twice as far away. So if you draw a straight line through your existing vector token, then measure the same distance um, on top of that, then you put down the, the future vector token. Uh, and the final step is that you move your token up to the current vector token and then delete that. Bob's around, he's live and lover. So, and, and you would uh, continue to do that each turn if you're just drifting along. So this, this robot, he's just patrolling around at five miles per hour. So his turn comes up, first step, plonk down the future vector token, move him up to the existing one, and then delete it, and so on. Okay, so th so that's that's the way he would go if he's not uh, moving around or changing direction. Now let's just say he spots a character down to the south there, and this robot wants to go and grab him. Um, again, uh, same process. The first step is that you change direction. Now, again, just assuming for the purpose of this illustration that this robot can accelerate by two meters per second squared. Uh, so uh, that's about the same as the thruster pack listed in the Traveller rulebook. It's 0 0.2 Gs. So um, now if you do the maths, that means that you can change the uh, position of this token by six squares or 36 meters. So we pick it up, we press the space bar, and he's going to move down in this direction 
uh, 36 meters. Okay, um, so that's the first step. First step is you change direction, you move the vector token. Second step is that you put down the future vector token. Again, the way we do that is we measure to the token uh, 30 meters, so it'll be 60 meters, so the future vector token will be right there. So plop that down. And the third and final step is that we move a robot up to the old vector token and delete that. Okay. Now let's just say, I'll just uh, illustrate it again. Um, he's starting to move up to that character down to the south, but his sensors pick up that that character is actually friendly. So he just wants to resume his five mile per hour patrolling route that he had before. So again, first step is that he moves his vector token um, up to 36 meters. So he's going to move it back up here. He's putting down his future vector token. And the third step is you move up to that token and delete it. Too easy. Um, look, it's pretty simple. It, it, it's a little bit complicated to look at, but once you get your head around it, it it's quite intuitive. Um, uh, it's not too difficult. Um, there are a few more complicated rules that I'll get into in, in another video, but for now, if any character's got a grav belt or if they've got, you know, Zodani robots floating around, I thought this would be a cool tool to use just to, you know, get them moving around on our maps. Cheers.